Here we go, question one, the graph of a quadratic function r is shown on the grid. What is the solution to r of x equals zero? I've been telling you guys over and over and over again, when you see something like this, instead of writing it r of x equals zero, write it with what we know. We know that f of x equals y. So now let's circle what we have. We have a y value or an output of zero. So the question is asking you this, if you have a coordinate, and you have a y value of zero, what is the corresponding x value that goes with it where we'll hit the graph? So if, let me just give you an example here. If I said, let's pretend like x is five or four. If I go two, four, and I know it's hard to see here, but if I go over four and up zero, using zero right here for the y, did I hit the graph? No. But if I go over two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, if I go over 14, and up zero, boom, you see I hit the graph. I could also go negative two, four, negative six, zero, and I would hit the graph. So there are two possible answer choices I could use for x. I could use 14 or I could use negative six. And it says, what is a solution? Well, one of the solutions is 14, so our answer is C. So make sure you guys are writing this right here when you see those type of problems. So you know, am I solving for the x or am I solving for the y? Two, what is the range? So they're asking you, if I have an x, y table, they're asking you, what are the y values here? And they give you this equation. We just said that f of x, that's the same as saying y equals, and you'll see over here on the calculator, I've already put it in y equals. And they're saying when the domain, the domain, those are my x values of negative four, zero, two, and six. So what are the corresponding y values? Type it into y equals, go to your table, and just put the corresponding values that go with each. So when x is negative four, you can see that y is 14. When x is zero, you can see right here that y is two. And then negative four. And then you can scroll down all the way to six. And you just match up. What are the y values? It's a. Three, which of the following is the equation of the quadratic mother? So we're looking for the quadratic mother. Well, this is y equals x. That's for a straight line. y equals two to the x, that goes like this. That's called your exponential. And y equals x squared. And if I graphed letter D, y equals x over two, that would be a line, but it's not a mother. It's not a parent function. So our answer is C. So memorize the x squared, that is your quadratic. That's the one that makes the parabola, the little u. Okay, number four, it says find the perimeter. Perimeter means add up all the sides. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. I'm gonna show you how to do this on paper, and then I'm gonna show you how you can just simply answer this using STO. And we've talked about that, using the STO button. So the first thing we're gonna do is add up all the sides. Well, when you're adding with polynomials, you just combine like terms. So here we go, two x squared, and 7x squared, when I add those, I get 9x squared. So I know it's not A, and I know it's not C. Now let's combine up our x's. I have negative 3x and positive 4x. Well, negative 3 plus 4, that's gonna give me negative 1x. Well, I already know, oh, did I do that right? Negative 1, oh, actually, that's, I'm sorry, that's positive 1, there we go, my bad. It's so positive 1x. And so you can see right there, my answer is gonna be letter B. But what if I can't combine like terms? I couldn't even combine myself. I was sitting there adding or subtracting incorrectly. So we're gonna pick a random number for X and we're gonna stow it. So we already know our answer is B. So what we're gonna do is we are going to take this plus this plus this. We're gonna type all that in the calculator. So let's, here we go, 2x squared minus 3x plus one plus 4x plus seven plus 7x squared minus five. And it's gonna give me an output of 41. So the question is, Basically, or what I'm saying is, is that when X is two, my output is 41. So I bet if I type this guy in right here, it's gonna give me an output of 41. Let's see if it does. Nine X squared plus X plus three. Boom, it gave me an output of 41. 
In fact, if you would have picked A, C, or D and you used a value of 2 for X, none, none of these would give you an output of 41. So my answer is B. Here we go, question five. What is the domain, or in other words, what are my X values? Look, people, these are open circles. Remember, open circles use these symbols. So I know it can't be A, and I know it can't be D, right? So now, if we're talking about from left to right, we're building fences. Well, I build a fence here at negative four. Then I can also build a fence here at two. And we're talking about the X value the domain. And so our answer is B. Six, the graph of f of x equals x squared. You could also say the graph of y equals x squared if you wanted to do that is shown on the grid. Which statement about the relationship between the graph of f, that's what I have in red, and we'll call this the graph of green. What happens whenever we go from red to green? If we make that transformation well I can't use green in the calculator but I can differentiate the new graph by scrolling to the left and making it bold and so we know that the bold graph in our calculator is going to be the one in green so here we go let's see what happens here's the one in red here's the one in green what happened it looked like it went to the left in fact if you look at a it says the graph of G is translated seven units to the left and you can see that it went seven units one two three four five six seven i know it's kind of hard to keep up with the cursor there so my answer is a it didn't go down it didn't go up and it didn't go to the right either which expression is equivalent again when you see the word equivalent you can use sto it might take you a little bit of time again i'm going to show you on paper how you could go through and simplify this here and then I'll show you how to use STO because STO will bail you out. So if you see a plus one here when you distribute, you don't have to distribute a positive one. But remember our method here, if you have a negative one, we negate. Negate means just to change. So we change everything, positives to negatives, negatives to positives. And now we can combine like terms. I have two x squared minus six x squared. So two minus six, it's gonna give me negative four. So I know my x squared is negative 4x squared. Now let's combine our x's. I have 4 here minus 6. Well, 4 minus 6, 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So that's negative 2x. So I can cross off c and d. Now let's combine up our numbers. We have 9 minus 3. 9 minus 3 is positive 6. So I know that this is the answer. Now if you look at our remember our previous problem we already stored actually I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to store it to X I guess I had 10 stored there so now and again it doesn't matter what you store for X I'm just going to use 2 I'm going to prove that this problem which I'll erase get all that that this problem right there is equivalent to our answer of letter B in the calculator so we're going to type in the problem and anytime the calculator sees the number X, or I'm sorry, the letter X, it's gonna put a number two in there. So we're giving it an input, and it's gonna give me an output. An equivalent means which one is the same. So I should get the same output when I'm finished here. So we'll see if I can get this typed in, plus nine, minus parentheses, six X plus three, close parentheses, and so I get an output of negative 14. Your output might be different depending on what you use for X, but I guarantee you that these two right here, that letter B, when I type this in, is gonna give me the same output, negative four X squared minus two X plus six, boom, negative 14, there's my answer. So even if you can't combine like terms on paper, like I'll do on question eight here, you don't have to. If it says which one is similar, if it says simplify, they're looking for the one that's equivalent or the same. So watch how we do number eight. I'm just gonna pick a random number. I'll pick three this time and I'm just gonna stow it or store to the letter Y. And now I'm gonna type this guy in right here in the calculator, negative six parentheses, seven plus four Y, minus eight parentheses, three Y, 
minus 10. And so watch what happens. Whenever I hit enter, I get one, negative 106. Is it positive 122? No, it did not match up. So now let's look at letter B. I'm just gonna type in letter B here, negative 48Y plus 38. Let's see if we get an output of negative 106. Boom, we do. Our answer is B. Now, if you wanna do this on paper, you would just come up here and distribute. Negative six times seven is negative 42. Negative six times four Y is negative 24 Y. You have to do one more distribution. Negative eight times three is negative 24 Y. Negative eight times negative 10 is positive 80. We're gonna combine like terms. That gives me negative oh, 48, thank you, Y. And then let's combine our numbers. Negative 42 plus 80 is positive 38, which is our answer of B. So you choose, do you wanna do it on paper or do you wanna use the calculator? But Stowe, that'll bail you out. So number nine, it says, in which step below does a mistake first appear in simplifying this expression? So here's our problem. What I've done is I'm gonna show you how to use Stowe on the calculator here. I've already have, already have a value of X stored in my calculator and I went ahead and typed in that long problem here. So I have it all typed in, I'm gonna hit enter and I'm gonna get a number or an output of 58. Again, your output might be different, but we're trying to figure out in which of these four steps does it not equal to 58? Because in order for it to be simplified, it still needs to be equivalent. So let's type in, it's gonna take us a little time here, 5x to the third, we're gonna type in the first step here, plus parentheses, 3x squared, plus 2x squared, and then minus parentheses, 4x plus 6x minus 3x. We're gonna hit enter, see if we get a value of 58, and we don't, which tells me they already made a mistake in step one. The question is, if I didn't understand how to use stow, how could I tell where the mistake was made? Well, remember what we said, if you put a little negative sign in front of parentheses, you remember that negates everything? So negative becomes plus, that becomes minus, this becomes minus, and this becomes plus. If you go back up to the original problem, look right here. We're not distributing anything, and this is a positive 6x, and if they do it this way, they're turning it negative. Why would you turn positive 6x to negative 6x if you're simplifying, and that means we're looking for a simpler something that's still of equal value. So just by knowing that, they made the mistake there. But you can see how Stowe, in step one, I got an output of 46. That means they already made a mistake in step one. All right, 10, the area of a rectangular sheet of paper is this here. So you have a rectangular sheet of paper, which we'll draw in green. So let's find out what that numerical area is. So right now, I have two stored to x, so 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. Let's see what that output is. So right now, the green has an area of 18. Then there's a smaller one, which we'll do in blue here. There's a smaller rectangle, and it's 4x minus 5. So if I do 4x minus 5, the smaller area is 3. And they're saying that they are cutting out Cutting out means to subtract. So if I just subtract those two, 18 minus three, and I took this guy away, and there was a hole in this paper, now the area would be 15. So we're looking for which one of these answer choices is gonna give me an area of 15. Let's type in letter A and see what we get. See if we can get an output of 15. Two X squared minus X minus one. And we got an area of five. Let's, let's try letter D. I think that's gonna be the answer. Two X squared minus X plus nine. Boom, I get an area of 15. My answer is letter D. 11, the diagram shows the floor plan of a storage facility. All dimensions are given in feet. Which expression represents the area? So as soon as I see area, we're talking about a rectangle, we're doing length times width, or 5x times 4x squared. Now, if you wanna do this on paper and you remember your rules, when we multiply letters, you add the exponents. 
So you do five times four is 20. And x to the first times x squared is x to the third. So I know my answer is A on paper. How could I check it? Well, here's the problem. You have to come up with the problem based upon the vocabulary word area. So I'm going to type the problem in my calculator, 5x times 4x squared. I already have a value for x stored. So I get an output of 160. When x is equal to 2, my output is 160. Let's see if this answer, 20x to the third, is 160. And it is. That means that is the answer. So we are 100% correct, A. 12, how can the product, product means to multiply, so you have 5x times 2x minus 3. If you want to do this on paper, you would do 5 times 2 is 10. x times x is x squared. And then you'd have to do 5x times negative 3, which is negative 15x. So we know on paper, we think we know on paper our answer is A. How could we prove it? Well, we already have a value stored in x. Here's the product. Product means to multiply. So if I actually go on my calculator and I multiply these two guys together, let me put parentheses around here, 2x minus 3, I'm going to get an answer of 10. Let's see if this gives me an output of 10. 10x squared minus 15x. And I get an answer of 10. I'm 100% correct. So again, number 12 is talking about vocab. So when they don't give you what to do with your numbers or your polynomials or your terms, you need to make sure that you put that in the calculator based upon the keywords. 13, what is the simplified form? Simplified, that means which one is equivalent, which one is the same, it's just simpler. Let's pick a number for Z. Let's take five and let's store it to the letter Z. So now what the calculator will do is it will go in and it'll put in an input of five right there and it'll give me some numerical value, an output. Let's figure out what that output is going to be. So negative three Z squared times and then you have z plus 2 in parentheses, minus 4. And then you have z squared plus 1. I get a numerical output of negative 629. We need to know which one is the same value. So let's try a negative 7 z squared plus 1. Did I get a match? No. All righty. Let's try letter B, negative three, alpha, z to the third this time, minus four, z squared, minus six, z, minus four. Let's see if we get an output that equals, and we do not get an output that equals, so we know it's not B. Let's try letter C, negative three, z to the third, minus 2z squared, minus 4, and that one didn't work, so let's try our last one here. Negative 3 alpha z to the third, minus 10z squared, maybe if I knew my buttons, minus 4. Boom, and there's our answer. We got a match. Negative 629, so our answer is D. I'll be honest with you, instead of using the letter Z, you could have just used the letter X because if there's only one input, which is just the letter Z, you could have picked any random letter, and X would have been easier to do. But for those that get confused with that, you can use the letter Z and it'll work. Okay, 14 was probably the biggest problem that everybody had on the test here. A rectangular wooden frame. So here we go, we're gonna draw a wooden frame. So here's what the frame is gonna look like. Not like that, it's gonna look like this. We're actually gonna draw the frame in blue here. And it says that it has side lengths of 5x and 7x plus one. The rectangular opening, so the opening here, which I will kind of just accentuate in this little pinkish color here. So the opening has side lengths of 3x 
and 5x. What is the area of just this part right here? Just the wooden frame. Well, it looks like you need to find the area of the whole thing, right? We kind of did a problem like this before, where you find the total area and then we're going to punch out or subtract that area in pink there. So to find the total area in blue, I would have to multiply those two first. And I can do that on the calculator. To confirm, I have a value of two stored to x. I'm gonna do five x times seven x plus one. Make sure you put that in parentheses like that. So the total area is 150 right now. When x is two, the total area is 150. But I need to punch out five x times 3x, that area. So if I do 5x times 3x, I know that what is in the pink here is 60. And if we're gonna punch that out, you have to subtract those out, subtract that area out. If I do 150 minus 60, I think that's 90, yeah. Now we need to know which answer choice is gonna give me an area of 90 that's left over. So let's try this here. Let's try letter C. 20x squared plus 5x. Boom, I get 90. So how would you do this on paper if you did not want to use the calculator? Well, let's find the area of what's in blue. If I find the area of what's in blue, I'm gonna pretend like it's the whole area. Pretend like what's in pink isn't there. We haven't cut anything out. So you do 5x times 7x plus one and distribute. 35x squared plus 5x. But now we need to subtract out what's in pink, right? And the dimensions for pink were maybe, come on now, 3x by 5x. Well, if I do 3x times 5x, that's 15x squared. So I need to subtract. 15x squared. And when I do that, I get 20x squared plus 5x. But you can see that if you cannot combine like terms, if you cannot multiply with letters, Stowe will bail you out. 15, the area of a rectangle. So that we're going to draw a rectangle here. The area is 63x to the fifth, y to the ninth. Find the width if the length. So they have a length here of 9x to the 4th, y to the 6th. They want us to find the width right there. Well, let's start here. We know that the area of a rectangle is length times width. So let's start applying some sense here with our numbers. 9 times what is 63? Well, I know 9 times 7 is 63. So it can't be A and it can't be D. So I know it's 9 times something is 63. Now watch how I can do this with the calculator. I already have a value of x stored and I already have a value of y stored. We are going to use the answer choices to plug in right here on the side. And we said that it's length times width. So take 9x to the fourth, y to the sixth, Times, let's pick an answer choice. Let's pick letter B. Let's plug in letter B right here. Times, letter B is 7x. Oh, we don't even have an exponent. So let's try getting rid of that. 7xy to the third. Now the calculator is going to give me a number. It's going to give me a number, a pretty large number. But let's see that if I multiply 9x to the fourth, y to the sixth, times the 7xy to the third, let's see if it actually matches up to the answer, the area here. So let's see if this number matches up to the one we have on our calculator. 63x to the fifth, y to the ninth. Ooh, that's a lot. Let's try it here. And look, it's a match. Or what you could do is you could say when we multiply letters, we add the exponents. So if I wanted to figure out x to the fourth times how many more x's would give me x to the fifth, well, it would be one more x. 
And if I have y to the 6, y to the 6 times how many more y's would give me y to the 9? Well, I would need 3 more. And we already said that 9 times 7 is 63. So that's how you would do that on paper. 16, which expression is equivalent to that fraction? So I went ahead in my calculator and I stored random numbers to A, B, and C. And then I hit my alpha F1 key to get my fraction. I saved some time by typing this in, typing the problem in. We're going to get an output. Our output is 2.953125. So now what we need to do is we need to go through and type in each one of these and see which one matches up to that number of 2.953125. Well, to save some time, we're going to go right to what I think is the answer. We're going to try letter C here. So I'm going to get into my fraction 7 alpha A raised to the 6th and then alpha B to the ninth. Oh, to the 3rd. Try that. I'm looking at the wrong one. And then 4 C raised to the 5th. Let's see if that gives us matching outputs. And I get a fraction. I go, oh gosh, how do I turn a fraction into a decimal? Well, you can take and do math frac and enter and it's saying take the answer and turn it to a fraction. Well, that's not going to help. Well, what if I did math decimal enter? Oh, there it is. 2.953125. Or I could just type in the calculator 189 divided by 64 and it'll still give me my answer or convert it to a decimal. So our answer is C. 17. Simplify. So we already have X and Y stored. So let's Let's type in, let's fraction here. So we need to do parentheses, fraction. On the top, 3x squared. And then on the bottom, negative 2y. Close that parenthesis. And then we need to take that guy to the third power. And we're going to get an output of negative 8. So now we need to see which one of these is going to give me an output of negative 8. I'm going to go right to what I think is the answer. We're going to type that in here. So let's type in our answer. We're going to type in fraction. Let's do, actually, we could do it like this a negative fraction if you wanted to. 27 on top, x to the sixth, and 8y to the third on bottom. Let's see if we get an answer that matches up. And we do. Our answer is C. 18. If you type this in the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 1. Anything to the power of 0. So even if I said 1 million to the power of 0, that's still 1. Number 19, all you had to do was look on your formula chart. And on the formula chart, it used, it used A, M, and N, which was A times M to the N. So you just mash it up. Your answer is B. And then 20, it's just calculator here. 3 raised to the negative third power times parentheses negative 2. We hit enter. So now we have to convert that to a fraction. So I do math, frac, enter, boom, 1 over 27, our answer is A.